most dangerous <laughs> situation you ever found yourself in? Uh, ECW arena. Uh, there were twice in, in there. Uh, the first time was early in ECW. There were uh, I, probably like 93. If not, it was early, early 94. We had a battle royal in the match. Earlier that night, Sabu was wrestling Funk and me and Sherry were to interject. So I go down to ringside and the spot was as soon as they're going to be fighting near the ropes. Sabu, when he sees me come, is going to plancha onto me. So I come down and I'm looking at his feet and I see his feet go, but get that about that far off the mat and bam, I'm hitting the back of the head and I'm under the ring. I'm thinking, I'm shaking the club. I'm like, Boy, damn, did I mistimed that. How did I mistime it that badly? And I hear Sherry screaming, this motherfucker's got a board. So we get back to the dressing room, rewind the tape, and a guy walks up, turns up with a two-by-four, and swings like a baseball bat and just whacks me in the back of the head. He had bright red hair. So that later that night, we had the Battle Royal, and down to me and Tommy, I beat Tommy, uh, and the crowd closes in. There was no barriers, and it was just a rope. The crowd closes in and they had turned the cameras off in the back because the show was over. So Tommy's left. I'm stuck in the ring with a thousand people surrounding the ring and I can't get out. And uh, I'm thinking, please, somebody get out here and help me. Uh, a guy pops on the apron and I turn and look, I, I don't want them breaking those ropes because once they come to those ropes, I'm fearing everybody's going to come. So I, as he jumps onto the apron, I realize the red hair this is the guy that hit me with the board earlier. So I tell him, you know, I'm trying to talk him out of coming in. Don't come to those fucking ropes. Come to those ropes. I'm going to hurt you. Uh, and I'm, <laughs> where the hell's the, the cavalry, right? And uh, he comes to the ropes and he was nervous as he could be. I mean, he was trembling. And I, the crowd starts banging the apron, you know, like the whole crowd. They, he starts getting a little bit excited, starts walking towards me. I said, dude, if you come any closer, I'm going to take you down and hurt you. And to this day, I don't know what he was going to say, but, you know, he, his hands came up like this. And when they came up, I grabbed him, cross-faced him, hooked him and slammed him on his face and told him to lay flat. And he kept trying to hit me in the, in the, in the privates. And, and the second time he did, I said, if you, and I put my thumb in the corner. Like, For some reason, Haku popped into my <laughs> Haku had told me this years ago. Uh, he said, just put your thumb in and pop their eye out. So I put my thumb in the corner of his eye. I said, if you try to hit me again, I'm going to take your eye out. And he tried again. And I dug my thumb in and he went flat as a pancake. And I saw at the last second somebody coming, and I dodged out of the way. Here was Mike Awesome, had fought his way to the audience and jumped onto the guy. By that time, security had gotten there. That night was bad, was, was dangerous. I would say a couple degrees up from that, probably 20 degrees up from that, was the night we threw Gary Wolf down with the halo. Uh, when that crowd rioted, you know, you, you get to a point in this business, uh, you know, you grow up here in all the vernacular, right? You, know, you hear this phrase, white heat. And you never see it, and you're around the business a good bit, and you start to believe, like, oh, those old-timers are putting themselves over, right? Like, they, I'm sure the fans just got crazy and tried to kill you. Um, and then I saw it that night, and it was terrifying because, you know, there's – I don't care how tough you are, but there's 1,100 people pouring towards you. You're, you're done. I mean, it, it's, it's not a question of, uh, you know, you, you got a chance or don't have a chance. It's a question of what's going to get me. Is it somebody going to stab me? Somebody going to shoot me? And Franny was laying face down on the apron, had no idea any of this is going on. So when I see the crowd pouring in from stage left, my right, I go to my left to get away from them. And as I dump out of the ring, I'm thinking, turn around and get Francine and get the hell out of here. And I turned around and looked up to see Francine and I see two guys coming around in full riot gear. Paul had always told us. Now, Paul, I'm sure you've heard this, heard this phrase. Uh, Paul was prone to telling a tale or two now and then. So he would always tell us, he would tell me and Francine, if you ever see cops in riot gear, you know you're in imminent danger. But I'm thinking, like, we're in the building all day. It's a bingo hall, right? I mean, how big is it? I don't see any cops there, let alone cops in riot gear. So when I saw those two guys come around, helmets, uh, bulletproof vests, the whole face shields, I, got, I thought, oh, shit, I'm in trouble here. And they pushed me down. Like, the one, the one in front grabbed my hair and pull, was pulling me, and the one behind was pushing me. I grab Franny's, we're going by, I'm bent over, and I can't get her feet up under her because they're pushing and pulling so quickly. And they, they're taking us through the crowd to get to the dressing room, and, and I'm getting shit beat out of me. People are punching and kicking and kneeing. So I push back to get Franny's legs up under her, but to see where I'm going. And Tommy had pulled the two curtains back, the entrance curtain and the dressing room curtain. So now we're from inside the arena looking right into the dressing room. 
And I can't even emulate it, but Tommy had this look on his face like somebody had a gun to the back of my head or something. And it scared me to death. Uh, we got to the car, got out of there. And for two or three months after, I had to be snuck in. Me and Francine had to climb into trunks of cars to get in and out of buildings, stay at different hotels. It was really a pretty heavy time and drew a lot of money with it. I actually interviewed Pitbull Gary Wolf a few weeks ago, and I specifically didn't ask who was at fault for doing the neck break thing because I knew he'd say one thing and you'd say another. <laughs> so I've decided to just like leave that completely alone.